And at this point, we've built the app and it works well. We go tap the flag of Ireland, boom, there you go. And now it's US, boom, there you go, and so forth. And again, easy. <laughs> um, it works fine, right? But with all the SwiftUI skills you've built so far, we can actually take what we've built, all this code here, and completely reskin it. Produce a different UI for the project we've currently built. This won't affect the logic at all. This is the logic down here, that's all logic right here. That's not gonna change here. We're just trying out some different UI here so you can see what you can do with your current knowledge. Now, experimenting with designs like this is a lot of fun, and I do wanna give you one word of caution, which is at the very least, please make sure you run your designs on a variety of iPhone sizes. I've got iPhone 15 Pro here, which is a sort of good middling iPhone size. It's also a Pro Max down to the SE down here and so forth. Uh, and it means you gotta work hard to try and find designs that work great across all these things. That takes some thinking. You see lots of great designs that work in exactly one phone size, like on Dribble, for example, they're very good at that there. Um, but uh, getting something that scales well on multiple devices is more challenging. Let's start off in our experiment with this blue to black gradient we have behind our flag. And it's okay to get us into a good finished shape, but now I'll try something a bit fancier. I wanna try a radial gradient with custom stops here. Now, previously I showed you how you can use custom stops with very precise locations to adjust the way our gradients draw on the screen. If we create two stops that are identical, so like 0.5 and 0.5, for example, then the gradient goes away entirely. The color just switches from one to the other immediately. We can use that here. So I'll say we have a radial gradient here, and there's gonna be a stops array. And uh, let's try it again, radial gradient with the stops array. Stops. Cool, thanks Xcode. Um, with a stops array uh, down here, and uh, then we'll specify center and so forth afterwards. So stops are gonna be in it with color, oops, color of blue and location of 0.3. And then in it with the color of red with location 0.3. You get that. So sharp blue, then sharp red. Center though, I'm gonna say is dot top, dot top of the screen. Start radius will be 200, end radius 700, like that. It's an interesting effect, right? We have a blue circle effectively overlaid over a red background. That said, it's also ugly. <laughs> These red and blue colors are far too bright. They're really sort of primary blue and primary red. Um, we can get a toned down version of these to get something that looks more harmonious by providing custom colors inside here that are bluish and reddish, but not quite so bright. We can say for the first one, I want a color that is red, 0.1, green, 0.2, and blue, 0.45. So a darker, more muted blue. And for this color down here, I'm gonna say I want a color with a red of 0.76, green of 0.15, and blue of 0.26. So again, a very muted red. Next, right now we have this VStack here with a spacing of 30, which will handle the question area, then the flags. But I wanna reduce that down to 15. The answer is, the reason is because I wanna make this whole thing more interesting. I'm gonna place this whole area into a visual element in our UI, making a colored rectangle with rounded edges so that, that part of the game stands out particularly clearly regardless of what flags we have and what background we have behind it. So this VStack here, boom, this one. I'm gonna add some modifiers here. First things first, has a frame with a max width of infinity. Stretch edge to edge horizontally. Then add a little bit of padding vertically of 20 points. And now add a frosted glass background. I'm gonna use regular material, like that. And then use a clip shape of a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 20. So it pulls it in from the edges like that. So you can see we're occupying the full horizontal space here. Add a little bit of vertical padding so it doesn't have to go quite to edge to edge on the flag and the text at the top. Then adds this regular material background so it stands out from the colors behind it while still letting a little bit sort of shine through the middle. 
and then use a random rectangle to clip the whole thing. It's looking better, but we're gonna carry on pressing on here. We're gonna say we want a title before our main box, a title of the game, and then a score placeholder afterward. This means having another VStack around here because this existing VStack spacing 15 is where we apply this material effect, the blur effect. We don't want that for the title and score. It should live outside that area here. And so we're gonna wrap these VStacks in another new VStack here, right? We're gonna say we have a VStack around that VStack like this. Boom, all the way around, all its modifiers like that. And then inside the outermost V stack will be our title. Text, I'll do guess the flag with a font in large title, weight of bold, and foreground style of white. Like that. Now, asking for a bold font is so common, you can actually just write dot bold and get the same thing. We've now got a nice title label at the top here. But I want a score label at the bottom. So we'll say after this V stack here, still inside the outermost V stack, will be a text of score, question mark, question mark, question mark, foreground style of white, and font title bold. There we go. So both this guess the flag title and the score label look good with white text, but the text inside our box now doesn't. We made it white originally, so it stood out against that blue and red background, but now it's really hard to read. To fix this, we can just delete foreground style for these things. We can say, you know, you should be, for example, um, the default color, so it's now black here. But for this one here, tap the flag of, I'm gonna use the iOS vibrancy effect to let a little bit of the background color shine through. So I'll say the foreground style here is, secondary. So you get a little bit of that sort of bluish color just shining through in the layout here. At this point, the UI more or less works, but I think it's a little bit too squished up. You can see um, if you're on a larger device, it sits neatly on the screen, but um, it doesn't look great on other sizes too. You, know, you can see, for example, uh, if I try um, this on a Pro Max, where's that Pro Max? Here we go. Also, the, the, right now, the 15 Pro Max is the largest iPhone by a long way. It's got a super-sized screen, um, and it means our little UI looks a bit strange, right? It's kind of sitting in the middle with some blue spaces, with red space at the bottom here. Um, and this box in the middle runs right to the edge of the screen, so you can't see the background behind it at all. Um, it doesn't look great. To fix this, we're going to add a little bit of padding here and there to our outermost V-Stack. And then add some space of views to force the UI elements apart. On larger devices like this Pro Max device here, this will make sure the uh, it uses all the available space neatly. But on small devices, again, we've got to try and work on small devices too, like the iPhone SE, the spaces will be compressed down so they basically disappear. It's a great way to make sure our UI works well on all the screen sizes. And so there are four spaces I want you to try and add in your code. One is directly before the guest the flag title. So I'll do a spacer right here. Then, let's start a preview again and actually go back down to the iPhone 15 Pro. Uh, then we're gonna add more spaces before the score question mark. And it's spacers here, I'm going to add two. They divide themselves up neatly, remember. And then one after the score text, like so. Remember, we have multiple spaces, they just divide the space between them. We've said there are four of them, so I'll take all the remaining space, divide it by four, and give each spacer one quarter as they go. And now, what remains is to add a little bit of padding around the outermost V-stack, this one here. So down here, all the way end of this one, I'm gonna just write dot padding. Now pull everything in from the edges just slightly so you can see the background neatly. And that's our refreshed design complete. Let's run it back again one last time and see how it looks. There we go. A nice design, nice and simple. And having all those spaces in place will work really well 
when it comes to saying, okay, now show me in a iPhone SE, for example, that, that, which I think is the smallest iPhone made at this time. Um, it's a big jump from iPhone Pro Max, that's for sure. Um, but keep in mind, this is just one possible design for the app. The logic hasn't changed. The alerts and the shuffling and the correct number and so forth have not changed at all. You might prefer the old design. There you are, it's getting beautifully. You might prefer the old design. You might prefer the new design, whatever, it's down to you. The point is, you've seen how with only the handful of SwiftUI skills you've learned so far, you can build very different designs very, very quickly. If you have the time, I would really encourage you, play around, see where you end up.